Hello and welcome to our today's lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to work on the last part of Unit 2 of Cambridge Primary Mathematics Learners Book 5. And this unit is about patterns in 2D shapes. The last part of this unit, which is aimed to check students' understanding of the lesson, is consisting of six questions that we will work on step by step. The first question in this part says that draw an isosceles triangle with one side that is longer than the other two sides. Isosceles triangle you know is the triangle in which two sides and two angles are equal. Now the side that's going to be longer than the other two sides is the one which is unequal to the other two sides. For example, if you have an isosceles triangle like this, maybe this is the longer side and these two sides will be the shorter ones. This is now an isosceles triangle and this is the side that is longer than the other two sides which are equal to each other. Well, that's the answer to question one. In question two it says, which of these triangles are equilateral? Equilateral triangles are the triangles that have equal sides. Equal sides and also equal angles. So now, triangle A is an equilateral triangle because all the sides in this triangle is equal. At the same time, all three angles are also equal and they are 60 degrees each. But triangle B is not an equilateral triangle because it is an isosceles triangle. These two sides are equal, but this one is longer than the other two sides. Triangle C is also not an equilateral triangle because it is a scaling triangle. None of the sides here are the same. Triangle D is an equilateral triangle because all three sides are the same size. At the same time, all the three angles are equal to each other. But triangle E is also not equilateral triangle because it is an isosceles triangle and these are the two equal sides of the triangle. Well, we are done with question two. In question three it says, which type of triangle can be used to make a tessellating pattern? Here I can say that all three types of triangle can be used to make a tessellating pattern. Tessellating pattern is a pattern made by putting or arranging 2D shapes side by side that are making a pattern. But here, all three types of triangle can be used to make a tessellating pattern. I will give the example here. For example, if we have equilateral triangle, let's say that this is an equilateral triangle, we can make a tessellating pattern by this. How we can make, we can put it in this way and we can continue putting it the same way. So now this makes a tessellating. If whatever way we continue, it will make a tessellating pattern and there will not be any gaps between the triangles. At the same time, isosceles triangle can also make a tessellating pattern. For example, this is isosceles triangle. We can follow the same way we followed for the equilateral. Now, if we continue, it makes a tessellating pattern. And there will not be any gap between the triangles. And if we have a scaling triangle, that one can also make a tessellating pattern. For example, if we have a right angled scaling triangle, now this makes a tessellating pattern. How? If we put it side by side like this, this now forms. And at the same time, here we can make it uh, let me draw it a bit properly. Here we can make it a tessellating pattern. If we continue, we can make the same thing going on without having any gaps between the triangles. So in this case, we can say that all three types of triangle can make tessellating patterns. And the three types you know are the equilateral triangle, the isosceles triangle, in the scaling triangle. 
Well, let me scroll up to go to question four. In question four, it says, how many lines of symmetry does an equilateral triangle have? An equilateral triangle is a triangle that has equal sides and equal angles. For example, if we draw a triangle here, this is an equilateral triangle because this side here, this side and this side are all equal sides. So when the triangle is equilateral, it means that all the sides and all the angles are equal or the same size. So in this case, equilateral triangle can have three lines of symmetry. The first line here, this line cuts the triangle or divides the triangle into two identical parts that are exactly the same. And from here also, it can have a line of symmetry which cuts the triangle in two, two identical parts. At the same time, this line from here can also be a line of symmetry because it cuts the shape into two identical or same parts. So in this case, we can say that it can have three lines of symmetry, three lines of symmetry, three lines of symmetry. Well, in question five, we have two parts, part A and part B. So question five says, here are two Rangoli patterns, two Rangoli patterns. How many lines of symmetry does each pattern have? Let's first work in part A. So if we draw a line from here, let's draw it from here that is crossing from the center of the Rangoli. Now this can be a line of symmetry. Why? Because both sides of the line are the same. If we consider, for example, this part here and this part here are the same, this part here and this part here are the same, and all the parts from both sides of the line are the same the same shapes and the same sizes. At the same time, if we draw a line from here, from here down and crossing from the center of the Rangoli, this is also now a line of symmetry because the shapes or the parts on both sides of the line are exactly the same. So two lines, if we draw a line from this corner from this corner and cross from the center of Rangoli. This is also a line of symmetry. And here from this one also, we can have a line of symmetry. And from here also, we can have a line of symmetry. And from this point also, if we draw the line, it can be a line of symmetry. Let's count how many lines of symmetry we have here. Starting from here, this one is one, two, three, four, five, and six. We have six lines of symmetry in this Rangoli. Why we have six? Because each of these six lines that we draw is cutting the Rangoli into two equal parts that are exactly the same. Let's now move to the second part of the Rangoli. In part B, this is also a Rangoli but here we do not have any lines of symmetry. How we do not have any lines of symmetry? For example, if we draw a line from here that is crossing from the center, let me draw it. Now, if we look to both sides of the line, this side here is not the same as this side. If we fold it, they will not lie exactly on each other. They are not looking, for example, here, this tip is heading towards the left, but this tip is not heading towards the left, it's heading towards the right, so it cannot be. At the same way, here we have a point here, but we don't have anything on the other side. So that's why it does not have any lines of symmetry. Well, we are done with two parts of question five. Let me scroll up to go to question six. In question six, it says, Copy this grid onto squared paper for each part of the question. We have four parts in this question. Part A says, color the grid so that there are 
no lines of symmetry. Color the grid so that there are no lines of symmetry. If, for example, I color it here, I color this part, we will not have any lines of symmetry for this pattern or for this shape. Because if we draw a line here, this is shaded, but the one on the other side is not shaded. If we draw a line from here, this part is shaded, but nothing is shaded on the other side. If we draw, if we draw diagonal lines, again, here it's shaded, but here it does not have any shading. And this diagonal also cannot have any lines of symmetry. So if we shade only this one part, we will not have any lines of symmetry. Part B says, color the grid so that there is exactly one line of symmetry. Color the grid so that there is exactly one line of symmetry. So in this case, let me erase the parts that I have colored already so that we should be able to do part B. Well, now if we color it here, if we color it here, we will have only one line of symmetry. And that line can be the diagonal that is moving from the bottom right to the top left. This can be a line of symmetry, but we will not have any other lines of symmetry over here, because if we draw this diagonal, which is from the top right to the bottom left, we will not have line of symmetry because we don't have any shading on the other side. Well, part B is also answered. In part C it says, color the grid so that there are exactly two lines of symmetry. Exactly two lines of symmetry. Well, if I color, let me erase it first. To have exactly two lines of symmetry, I can color it here, 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 and here. In this case, we can have exactly two lines of symmetry. How? If we color, sorry, if we draw a line from the bottom right to the top left of the shape, we will have a line of symmetry because both sides of the line are the same. At the same time, if we draw a line from the top right to the bottom left, again, we have a line of symmetry because the parts which are shaded on the left side of the line are exactly the same as the parts which are shaded on the right side of the line. So part C is also answered. Here we have exactly two lines of symmetry. Well, we are done with this part also. In part D it says, color the grid so that there are exactly four lines of symmetry. Exactly four lines of symmetry. Well, let me erase it first. So to have exactly four lines of symmetry, I will shade this way. I will shade this corner square, this corner square, and the one here, and also the bottom left corner square. Now we have four lines of symmetry. How? We have two diagonal lines of symmetry, one horizontal and one vertical. Let me draw them all. So we will start from here. This is the diagonal that is moving from the bottom right to the top left. And the other one is moving from the top right to the bottom left. Again, this is a line of symmetry because both sides of the line are the same. At the same time, if we draw the vertical one, we will have it as a line of symmetry because both sides of the line are the same. And if we draw the horizontal one, again, it can be a line of symmetry because the parts which are divided are exactly the same. This is all about the last part of Unit 2 of Cambridge Primary Mathematics Learners Book 5. I hope it makes sense for you and it helps you how to work with 2D shapes and how to work with the patterns to make lines of symmetry and also to color the shapes in a way that can have lines of symmetry or that can have the parts that are exactly the same. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video and share the video with your friends, your classmates and your students if you're a teacher. Have a nice time and thank you so much.